Hi and welcome back. In this video, I want to talk about the MIP 3.6 impacted as planned single base. It is a modeled delay analysis method. It's additive because we are adding new activities to model the impact. And we will talk first about the single base. We have global insertion and stabbed insertion. What are the SVPs? For basic implementation, we need baseline validation because we are modeling the impact against the baseline. We use the baseline as a reference. We add new activities into the baseline to evaluate the impact. Or update validation. According to the RP, you can use the baseline or maybe an update of your choice to model the impact, but it is still a single base. We know we need only one schedule to evaluate the delays, but it's common to use baseline in for this delay analysis method. You also need delay ID and the quantification. For enhanced implementation, you might need the as built to verify the actual data. This is the process. I'm going to go over this quickly. Then I'm going to show you step by step explanation on how to do that inside Promavera P6. We determine the unimpacted schedule, the schedule without any impacts. It can be a baseline or the update prior to the event start date, but it's so common to use a baseline for this delay analysis method. Insert new activities or fragmentary network. Fragnet for short to model the impact. Run the schedule to evaluate the impact. Then I'm gonna zero out the durations of all fragnet activities to make sure that there was no other change in the schedule. And I'm gonna show you everything step by step. The result must have at least one longest path that runs from the start to finish. Compare the project completion date, which you have just achieved against the unimpacted completion date to determine the impact of the fragment. Then we can create a table that documents and justifies any schedule changes made to the baseline before the impacted as planned is created. We quantify net delays and the gains. In the enhanced implementation protocol, you can perform an analysis for all significant delays, but that were not a part of your analysis. You know, maybe they did not hit the longest path, for example. So for enhanced implementation, you can perform an analysis for all other significant delays, which you did not consider before. Compare the impacted schedule to the as built and explain the variances for all significant activities. Okay, because you have your schedule update, which includes all actuals in the project, right? So you want to compare that update to your impacted schedule after adding the fragment and they maybe explain the variances for all significant activities, if any. So this is for the enhanced implementation. Let's go over one example inside Promavera P6. Okay, so that's my baseline and I'm going to assume that I have site obstructions that prevented me from starting the excavation activity on a schedule or as planned. I'm going to go to the baseline. That's my excavation activity. I will go to WBS and it creates a new WBS called project impact. Then I'm going to insert sub WBS and call it maybe delay event number one site obstructions or excavation excavations site obstruction then go to activities okay and um, I like to position that WBS right after milestones and I'm gonna add a new activity called site obstructions. And let's assume that it took seven days. All right. 
I have just added a new activity to model the impact. It did not previously exist in the schedule before. So I'm gonna link it. Uh, I will go to the predecessor of site obstructions. It's a project to start. And the successor is excavation because excavation should have started right after the project start but it didn't because of the site obstructions that took seven days before it's gone okay so we know right now this is my original completion date before i run the schedule i'm gonna run it right now after i added the activities with the relationships and now we have a new completion date so your job is basically compare the project completion of the unimpacted schedule to the project completion of the impacted schedule okay so this activity has pushed the excavation activity later on to model the impact because in reality it actually started 9th of august so i wanted to model that so the project start is 1st of august and i should have started excavation on the same day uh, but i actually started 9th of august so i added that activity to model the impact okay this is in a very simple form you can also go to the longest path group and sort delete click ok right click filter and filter by longest path Okay, so we can see the you know the new activity that we have just added so that's uh, you know according to the rp this is a part of the method after we run the schedule we want to look at the longest path and analyze it which will help us in our comparison you can also assign the baseline here to make a comparison if necessary what are the advantages of this method it's a setable for short and simple projects easy to understand and implement as i showed you anyone can understand it and implement it you need minimum requirements to implement you only need a baseline nothing else it is not suitable for large and complex projects it's hypothetical there are actually many disadvantages here it is not very strong a method it's a hypothetical because the schedule update critical path it changes but your measuring point does not one year down the road the critical path will deviate from the baseline but you know imagine that you are modeling the impact of one delay event that took place two years after the project start and you are still using the baseline to model that you are still using the baseline critical path to model that because things it changed a lot you know it's very dynamic we have more delays right now we have more work accomplished so that's why it's hypothetical it produces unfair and misleading results if the delay of one only one party is modeled so i i have just modeled in my example the delay is caused by the employer but if you keep adding all the delay risk events caused by the employer, you're going to see only employers delay. Of course, it's going to push the longest path. So it's, uh, you know, that's one of the disadvantages. It does not consider concurrency or pacing because you need a schedule update to determine concurrency because you want to see how the contractor is progressing throughout the project to determine concurrency. But if you are using the baseline, you cannot does not consider acceleration as well the more you progress away from the baseline schedule the less accurate reliable the analysis is and the more assumptions we want to disqualify everything beyond data date is an assumption hopefully it's a reasonable assumption but it is an assumption and over time we make schedule changes we refine our logic for example we remove out of sequence right all of that so but this method does not consider any of that it is still assumes that you have your baseline as workable model which is a hundred percent practical and uh, you know relevant but it is not the case so you are still using a baseline so that's why the method is hypothetical uses for short simple projects 
where the critical path is unlikely to change. Schedules that are developed with very poor scheduling and logic because it looks nice in the baseline, but because the schedule is not developed as per best practices of scheduling, in the schedule updates, you find disasters. You will need to make a lot of changes. You know, it is not reliable. It is not workable. So that's why maybe it's a, an, a good idea, although it is not the best, to use this method if you have this kind of problem. Or sometimes yes, schedule updates are not available. They are not prepared and submitted. So you have only your baseline and you don't have any other choice. Limitation. It is not suitable for large and complex projects or when the critical path changes. Used to analyze the delays of the overall project. In my example, you can see the overall delay of the delay impacts, but it is not used to analyze concurrency, as I mentioned before. Both contractors and employers' risk events should be incorporated to perform a fair delay analysis, as I mentioned as well. This method is modeled. You model the delay by adding new activities. It's additive because you add new activities. The periodic mode we have global insertion and stabbed insertion. For global insertion, you add all delay events, all fragments, all at once. So I showed you one example. By adding one delay event, you repeat the same process for all delay events in the same file. Or you want stabbed insertion, you add delay events separately to evaluate the corresponding impact. Again, you are using one file only in your analysis. You are using one schedule only, which is the baseline in most cases. You can add one or more delay events at a time to evaluate the corresponding impact. Maybe it's based on phases. So I'm gonna, for example, add the maybe four events that are related to substructure, and I'm gonna add all of them into the baseline to evaluate the impact then I'm gonna perform a separate exercise for other three delay events related to superstructure. Or it can also depend on delay nature. So maybe I wanna perform the exercise for all delay events related to concrete only in the project and so on. So that's step the insertion. It is not window analysis. I'm gonna still use the baseline schedule only, but I'm gonna separate the insertion of different delay events. And this is it for this method, the 3.6 impacted as planned.